So I'm going to be giving you the three main areas to be checking when you're using an OBD scanner to make sure that you're inspecting the car the right way. And I will say realistically, there's thousands of different scanners that you can get, all ranging from around $10 up to thousands of dollars. I would suggest for a lot of people, if you're just starting into fixing cars yourself and different things like that, I would highly suggest the Blue Driver Scanner. We're going to get into the specifics of exactly why I believe this is good, especially if you're just a beginner later on in the video. But I've been using this for years now myself, and it's only about a hundred dollars from Amazon. So first things first, all you're going to be doing is just plugging this scanner into the OBD port. For most cars, it's going to be right under where the steering wheel is located. If it's not there, you could just do a quick internet search to see exactly where the port is for your car. So you can see it right there. I'm just going to plug it right in and boom, it's all plugged in. So with this one, it's going to show a little blue light that shows that it's actually gonna be fully synced in. And then from there, I'm going to go on the app. So this is a Bluetooth scanner, so it's going to sync up with a Bluetooth on my phone first. And along with this, you also need to make sure that your car is on as well. So we're just gonna turn it on to the on position and that's going to allow the scanner to work as well. So this is the dashboard it's gonna be bringing you to, and I know it looks like a lot so far, but there's really only three areas, as I mentioned, you're really gonna be paying the most attention to. The first area is gonna be right here in the read codes area. And I will say, although I'm using the blue driver scanner, it's going to look around the same with just about any scanner you're gonna be using, even more of a basic one. But after clicking in there, you're gonna be seeing this little panel right here with three different options, check engine light, common dash lights, and all system modules. The main areas here you're gonna generally be checking is a check engine light one. And if you were just doing a quick check onto the car, this is really the first thing that you should be doing or one of the first things. You just click in there. And then of course, if there was a check engine light that was illuminated on the car, it would show the codes there. And when you see the dashboard come up like this, you're going to see it in three different categories. You're going to see confirmed codes, pending codes, and permanent codes. So confirmed codes, that's kind of what it sounds like. These are the codes that are actually stored on the system. The car definitely has this code. It's set at this point. You basically have to fix whatever the problem is with that car. Pending codes is a code that isn't technically stored yet. It's possible that it might just clear away on its own. The car generally has to be driven around a little bit more before it gets to that confirmed code status. And permanent codes is just for cars that are around a 2010 and newer so with these codes these are actually codes that cannot be cleared from the system unless you fix whatever problem is causing that code so let's say with these two codes right here let's say these two categories of codes confirmed and pending these can be cleared without fixing whatever problem is causing that code we're going to get into that a little bit later in the video but this one cannot you just need to know that but as i mentioned this is all just codes for the check engine light nothing else what about for all the other codes that could potentially come up with all the other the dash lights as well and that's what we're going to get into here so let's go back to this dashboard and we're going to go to all system modules and then it's going to do a full system scan so this one's going to take a little bit of time generally speaking i would usually let this sync up for a good minute or so while i'm doing other things and checking other parts of the car okay and so it finished up the whole scan and you're going to be seeing everything here so first you're going to be seeing around what you saw with the read codes part where you just see these first couple of things right here these first couple of categories but you're also going to be brought to these other sections on top of that and if you do this with literally just about any car unless it's like a brand new car you're probably going to be seeing some other types of codes popping up as well even if there's no dash lights that's on just like with my car here but it's going to be organized and around the same way you're going to see each code categorized by the type of module that is linked to so let's say right here there's the power steering code this is for the abs or anti-lock brake system code this is for the air conditioner and onwards now what you can do from here is click into the code and this is why i say that the blue driver scanner is going to be a great scanner for a lot of people that are just kind of beginners with cars first of all it's going to tell you the code definition so let's say with this one this is a wheel speed sensor and then what it's going to do right after that is it's going to give you a code frequency to see exactly how common this is for the car that you're going to be using and then it's also going to show you a top reported fix for that car that's linked to that code so this can basically take care of a lot of the guesswork of all right let's say why is that code exactly coming up and if it's a very common thing for that car then it's a good chance that one of these fixes is going to take out whatever the problem is i will not say it's a definite thing you should still do other things to check as well but this could generally point you in a pretty good direction and what i would also suggest is taking that code plugging it into the internet and seeing exactly what comes up as well the next area we're going to be talking about is the clear codes section this is going to be sectioned off in a couple different areas as well basically around the same thing is what you saw with the read codes area so first of all you're going to see the pending and confirmed codes of course 
that's exactly what it sounds like it just clears the pending and confirmed codes that's on the car and then if you go here it goes to all the codes so it'll go into more of the modules not just clearing the things like let's say the check engine light itself i'm not going to do that now but the main time you should be doing this is potentially after you fix whatever the problem was that was wrong with the car that was setting off the code and generally speaking for a lot of the fixes you'd want to clear the code after doing the fix driving around a little bit and then seeing if the code will come back in the system and by the way if you did need a little bit of help with just finding the right car that you could potentially buy and buy for a really good deal or even potentially make some profit and flip later i did put together a checklist just going over that exact thing if you want access to that just go to the link in the description below it's completely for free and now you might be asking, well, what would happen if someone was to do this themselves before they were going to sell the car, clearing the codes, and you have no idea what codes were potentially on the system or even if they tried to clear it themselves. And that's why we're going to be getting into the third and final part that you really need to make sure that you're checking, which is the smog check right here. So you're going to be clicking into this. If you're using a different scanner, that can also say the I am readiness status if it's not the blue driver scanner. And then you're just going to do the scan on the top here. So what you want to see is it looking like this it'll say green with everything it'll pass everything here if it's a scanner that doesn't look like this it could also say either complete or incomplete what you don't want to see when you're looking at any of these monitors right here is incomplete and that just means that that monitor has not fully completed the test yet which could potentially be storing a code it is okay by the way if it just says not available let's say something like this it just means that that test is not applicable to that car that you're using and generally speaking the only way for the system to fully clear the test is by driving around more as well make sure you do these checks with every single car you're going to be buying or looking to fix and you should be off to a good start all right i'll see you in the next one peace